Today, we are gonna discuss some mistakes that I wish I knew about when I was getting started in my UX design career. My name is Dan Scott. I have taught over a million people design at bringyourlaptop.com. I've been a UX designer for about 15 years now. So yeah, made loads of mistakes when I was getting started. Hopefully for you though, with a bit of borrowed experience, you'll find yourself in a sticky situation and you'll remember some of these mistakes and you can kind of look to some of the solutions to can maybe shortcut your career becoming a better UX designer. Mistake number one is thinking that Dribbble is UX design. Uh, it's this kind of like a beauty pageant where you're like, all right, Dribbble stuff. It is awesome, beautiful colors, composition, it's turned kind of crooked, looks great. You pull up your stuff, your UX solution to the problem from your client, you're like, oh no, <laughs> mine doesn't look as good. You run into that like Instagram holiday version where everyone looks like they're having a great holiday. Your holiday though, doesn't look as great. It's still good, but it's not that Instagram version. And that can be the big trouble when you're getting started. What I've learned is, is that it's not a comparison game. It's not a beauty pageant. What you need to do is you design for your users and your stakeholders, and you design separately for Dribbble. That's for getting jobs. That's your portfolio piece. That's looking good amongst other designers. That is shining star stuff. Function is UX design. We are doing the job, finishing the project, it has some warts because we have some things we need to do, some accessibility we need to do. Then you design for Dribbble. Everything can be tidied up and look pretty. And that brings me to number two, skipping user research. I do it even now, <laughs> every third job, uh, big mistake. So the latest example, I do this all the time. So the latest example is I'm like, bring a laptop needs a plus feature. We're experimenting with it. So we're thinking, all right, what features do people want? I know what people want because I created Bring Your Own Laptop. So I listed down what everyone wanted and kind of like handed it to the teams, like, let's make this. And then the team pushed back and said, we should do some user research. You're like, ah, yeah, yeah. So they went and did it. And guess who got the least likely to align with what the students actually wanted from features? It was moi. I learned that it's just so important to do it. Just have it as a step. You can be a simple survey, they can be an interview with a couple of people. It can be as light as an Instagram story post. Okay, so you don't have to get hung up on it being a big deal. It can just be right for the job. And for us, that one was a survey that we emailed people and they filled it out themselves. It was really easy and man, it shone a light on all the things that I thought was right, but actually went. User research just gives you a clearer picture on everything before you get started. So mistake number three is building the actual product instead of the minimum viable product, the minimal version of that product. You've got your user research and you're like, ta-da, I've got the final thing. You said you wanted it, I have the thing you want. And nobody wants it. And you're like, huh, it's because I skipped that MVP bit, the minimum viable product. Like you end up having to go, all right, this is what they want. This is what I would like to give them. What is something that I can do in a week and give to them? It could be a wireframe, it could be just like the really core stuff using third party and it's all a bit junky and doesn't quite work and actually doesn't do the thing properly, but you can give it to them quickly. And when I say them, it's your potential audience. Give it to them, give it to your colleague next to you, just something simple where you can say, does this what you want? What normally happens though is they go, I don't like it. You're like, but you said you wanted it. And now you've got the thing and you don't want it. What they really want is maybe this other thing. You iterate quickly. You go back to them like, is this what you want? No, go back again. And you're you're six weeks into it, but they're like, oh, you know, this is the thing. You're like, huh. A good example of this is me and the team, we're like, all right, we want this way of people chatting to each other. So like a Facebook timeline story type thing, you know, it's community building. We want people to chat on Bring Your Laptop. So we're like, all right, this is the big massive thing we wanna do. We scoped out the document, did the user research. We're like, this is the thing, we're gonna make this thing. We're like, no, 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 let's do the MVP, okay? Me and Vic, you know, got it as good as we can and we get it out there and we're like, well, just, just for a little bit, just to test, okay? And you get it out there and guess what? Still there now. People love it, people use it. We've tidied it up a little bit, but this like 70% rest of the job that we were just waiting to do after the MVP, didn't do. You know, if we'd skipped the MVP, people probably would have still liked it and used it the exact same way, but it would have taken us like 10 times as long and cost us 10 times as much. Mistake number four is not having a design system. It is when you end up with inconsistent design. Uh, fonts and colors that end up kind of drifting away from the original design. 
All right, a good example of this is you're working for a company, okay, and the first person comes to you from the company and says, hey, I need you to solve this uh, homepage problem I'm having. And then the second person comes to you, same company, but they're like, got a different problem. They're like, can you solve this other problem for me? Okay, it's about the blog and free signups. You're like, I can do that. And then the third person comes to you and says, all right, we've got this checkout user flow problem. And you do that one. And what you end up doing is you end up making great decisions individually, but there's no cohesion, no connection between them all. And that's where a design system can be so important. Think of a brand guidelines. It's a way of saying, all right, even though we're tackling different problems, we've got consistency and we can teach people how to use our site or app. And they know where they are, where they're going, even though they're doing different things in different places. All right, mistake number five is not asking why. You need to be a why machine. Why are we doing this? When people come to you, especially when you're new, they say, here you go, build this feature for me. And you're like, okay, you build the feature and you make it great. You test it and the feature works great. What you didn't realize is that you're not sure why it's being made. It happens so much in Bring Your Laptop. So the best why person is not even our UX designer, it's our web developer. He's like, why are we building this? And he'll come up with like ways he can get to the same solution or fix our problem or at least test our problem with something he can turn on with a switch. You need to be bad cop and good cop. Hello. Hi. Ah. You need to say, oh, that's really interesting. Let's test that because that's a good hypothesis of a solution. What is the problem? So an example for me, I had a product manager come to me and was like, all right, we need an email pop-up. I'm like, all right, build an email pop-up, make it look good, function really good. And like, bam, I won. I'm UX designer, I'm the best. And the problem here is I didn't ask why we were building this pop-up menu. What actually they wanted was more email signups. And turns out that pop-up ruined that page. It meant that we were getting more emails through the pop-up, but the engagement for the page went right down. And the page itself was doing pretty good. So we ended up kind of murdering that page with our pop-up, but I don't know why. My job here is to kind of find out that step back, why are we doing this? So that I can test it, because I know what we're testing, and also come up with some other options. All right, that's a great idea. Let's maybe do a side banner. Let's do some uh, lead magnets. Let's try some other things to get you where you wanna go, rather than just building a feature. We need to figure out the why, why we're building this feature. All right, mistake number six is not testing early. It is when you forget to test and don't get in the hands of the users and you skip that step and go straight to the developers. Big mistake. Why is it a big mistake? Is that you can learn so much with such little effort really early on in the project by just testing with the users. Different from an MVP, this is where you, you're still in Figma or Sketch, whatever app you're using, okay? They all have provisions where you can, let's say you're building an app, okay? And you get that app put onto a phone. It's really easy to do. And you hand it to your colleague. You pay some users. You take it home for your family. And you give it to them and say, Bill, I want you to uh, buy two books and try and check out on the cart. And you watch them. You just look over his shoulder. It can be that simple. You're like, Watching him, you gotta keep quiet though, it's really tough. And you're like, Bill, 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 where's he going? Bill, Bill, <laughs> Bill, Bill's going the wrong spot. You really want to help Bill. But what you've learned is, it's not as clear as you think it was. You thought it was good, looked great on design, gave it to Bill, Bill blew the thing up. So if you are looking to test early, a great way of doing it is to come up with a user flow. Okay, sometimes it's called a user journey. Like, this is where I assume they will go. If they wanna check out and buy something, I assume they're gonna go here, here, here. Then you mock it up real quickly in Figma and you hand it to Bill. You give him a task, you just say, here Bill, buy two books. Bill goes and does it and you take notes. You might find that Bill finds a better way. He does it in two steps instead of your three, okay? Or that he takes 10 steps and you need to iterate. And that's the key thing, is you need to give yourself space for iteration. People don't, they kind of just give it to the developer and the iteration happens. It's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen after it's been built, it's gonna come back to you for fixing, and that's gonna take months and tens of thousands of dollars. Whereas I can iterate right now, sitting next to me, testing, give it back to him really quick, quick iterations, get to a really good solution, costing us next to nothing. All right, mistake number seven is accessibility. Forgetting that it exists and not doing it early enough in your design. Accessibility can mean a lot of things to different areas, but for UX design, okay, specifically, it's kind of when you, like when you're designing, you end up designing for yourself. You don't, you try not to, but you do. 
And accessibility is acknowledging that not everyone is equal. You need to consider things like font. Okay, it's an easy one. The size, the weight of it though. What contrast of that font against the background? Is it easy to see? It's for me, but I'm not everyone, okay? And looking at color combinations. Are they easy, contrastable? Button sizes. My dad, big sausage fingers. If I put the buttons too close, smush. Hits them both. Test it with them, okay? So I know that I need buttons that have distance and have some size to them. Otherwise, they can't be hit. Another reason to make sure accessibility is at top of mind is Google. Search rankings for a website are super important and accessibility is a big part of how they rank them. If they're sending people to your site and they're getting lost, they're going to not rank you very well. Um, the cool thing about it though, especially when you're new, there are tools. Google has Lighthouse where you can go through, run accessibility reports, does performance reports as well. If you're using, say, Figma, there are plugins that will help you with it. And it's really good. You end up educating yourself. You start building designs with other people in mind because you're aware of like, oh, okay, not everyone sees colors the same way as you or has the same dexterity. So it's gonna happen, you might as well do it at the beginning. All right, so those are the mistakes that are, I really wish I knew about when I was getting started. I've learned them the hard way. If you found that useful and you wanna learn more about UX design, Figma, some of the plugins, accessibility, uh, I've got a lot of these in my courses at bringyourlaptop.com. There'll be a link for that in the description. All right, that is it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.